Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, at this point we have finished painting kind of the background of our picture and we're going to go now and focus on the sheet and the houses. Um, just kind of a recap, uh, the Capitol building to make it look a little bit different I added a touch of blue. Um, horizontally with my paintbrush I added texture in the trees and vertically in the grass. Alright, so let's talk about painting the sheet. So we know that the ice is typically white. However, the ice would reflect the sky color. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to kind of cordon off my area of white that had blue mixed into it. And that's going to become my ice color. So that very, very, very light blue. Um, at this point, if you need to transition to a smaller paintbrush, now is a great time to do that. I'm going to keep with this one just for a minute while I paint over my hog line and get that nice flat edge that I want. So I'm using that flat paintbrush. So again, let the paintbrush do the work. If you have a paintbrush, if you're using a paintbrush that has a flat edge, then oop, we have Katan who's visiting. If you have a paintbrush that has a flat edge, you want to go ahead and use that flat edge. There's a reason that you bought that flat edge paintbrush. You want it, well, let me move the cat. You want the flat edge paintbrush because it's going to help you make flat edges. So I'm doing that. I'm going to go and paint around the house. Remember inside of the house you also have the second circle in is white. So make sure you go and you paint that. You can paint it the same kind of light bluish color, or if you want to use pure white for that, you can do pure white for that. Either one is fine. And if you overpaint an area, you still have that original color. Just go back and paint it out. Again, it's the wonder of paint. You can just paint over it. So if you want to make this super realistic, the farther away that the sheet becomes, the lighter it'll become because your eye just can't register color as well far away. So it'll become lighter and less detailed. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and add more white towards the back sheet or the back house. Um, but if that is less of a concern for you, then don't worry about it. Use all the same color. Alright, so just finishing up the painting of this. And then, so this is your sheet. You know, this is, you know, you get to choose if you've always wanted to have the purple houses or if you've always wanted to have, you know, whatever color you of you know, house you've been to and you're like, oh, I wish at home we didn't just have what red, white, and blue houses. I wish we had, you know, XYZ color. You are more than welcome to change the color of your house. It is your house. Maybe you and your partner have uh, favorite colors and you want to make this, like, you know, your house. So it's representing, like, you know, your favorite colors. So, like, for Luke and I, you know, we do one of the rings would be... Um, purple and the other one would be orange, you know, burnt orange, because those are our favorite colors. So it doesn't have to be the blue that I made. It could be whatever choice house color you'd like. So I'm painting in my white house ring here. I'm sure there's someone out there twitching because I'm probably calling it the wrong thing. So I'm sorry, all of my ice maintenance people. And then basically after this, we're going to take another mini break um, before painting in the other colors, the actual colors of the sheet, um, because we want to give them a chance to dry. I'm going to transition to my skinny paintbrush because it's just too much. If it's your first time using a paintbrush, always wet it first, get a little bit hydrated, and then go in. paint that in. 
that's ready to go. And then you'll literally just paint your houses the color that you want them. So traditionally at our club, we have blue in the outer ring and red in the middle ring. Um, instead of making you guys watch me paint that, I'm going to show you really quickly how to add some clouds to your sky if you're interested in that. And I'm just washing out my paintbrush right now. So if you want to add clouds to your sky, you can take your paintbrush, um, blot off any, like, you don't want a ton of paint on your paintbrush. And then you want to do horizontally that same blotting technique that we did, or that dabbing technique that we did in the um, in the trees down here. So I like to just have a couple coming in, give a little bit more texture up there, and then that's basically the end of our painting tutorial. So if you need to go back and touch up anything, go ahead and go back and touch it up. Again, it's your choice what color you make your house. Um, I am going to add an additional video, uh, once this is all dry, of how to add rocks. So you can play, you know, whatever game you'd like with the rocks. It could be the game that you always talk about every time you're broom stacking. It could be, you know, the game that haunts you every day and you wish you could replay it one time. Um, it's really your choice what game, if you choose to even be playing a game, you include. So, um, recap, you want to always make sure whatever you're painting that you start from the background of your picture and you slowly work forward. Um, I typically recommend doing a technique that's called outline and fill in. Exactly what I'm doing right now where I'm outlining around an object before filling in the color. Gives you a much smoother finished line. Mix in that color. Straighten up your edges and then fill it in. If you have a lot of color variation and you're not happy with that, sometimes the paint gets a little bit thin, whether it's been watered down by accident. Um, but you know, you can always go back and do a second coat if you need to of a color. And especially some of these bolder colors like blue and red, they sometimes need second coats because they're just such a deep pigment. So, alright everybody, I hope you've had fun, I hope you've learned something, and I hope you have a chance to add some curling artwork to your household. Um, before we go, I just wanted to kind of really quickly talk about how to take off the paper or how to take off the tape. You always want to remove your tape at a 45 degree angle um, so it doesn't rip your paper. Uh, if it starts to rip, take it from the other edge, um, go from the other opposite direction. Um, and I always recommend that you let your paint dry before removing your tape. All right, everybody. Um, I hope you've had fun. I hope you have a great time and I'd love to see what you made. Alright everybody, I'll talk to you later.